Hi, my name is Kate Field, and I'm the manager for science and research development for Fresh Kills Park. Uh, for those of you not familiar with Fresh Kills Park, it is a park currently under development on the west shore of Staten Island. Before its ongoing transformation to parkland, Fresh Kills Park was the Fresh Kills landfill, which used to be the largest landfill in the world. And this is what Fresh Kills used to look like during its time as an active landfill. And this is what Fresh Kills looks like today. Uh, it primarily consists of rolling grasslands, um, as well as tidal creeks and wetlands. Now, my job at Fresh Kills Park is to manage our science and research program. Our mission is to promote responsible and innovative strategies for environmental sustainability and ecological restoration through collaborative investigation, demonstration, and instruction. Um, in practice, this means that we research the environment and ecology at Fresh Kills Park and study the ways that it is changing as the site undergoes its transformation from landfill to green space. The information that we gather helps us plan for a park that is adaptive to the environmental conditions on site. Uh, one very productive line of research at Fresh Kills Park is the study of grassland bird populations. Grasslands are a critically endangered habitat and with 800 acres of grasslands, Fresh Hills Park is the largest habitat of this type in the region. As such, many grassland birds have begun to nest on site. One such bird is the grasshopper sparrow. Uh, in New York State, the grasshopper sparrow is a species of special concern, meaning that it is at threat of being endangered. In 2015, researchers from the College of Staten Island first observed the species nesting at Fresh Hills Park, and they have been nesting there and fledging young ever since. Grasshopper sparrows nest on the ground in grasses. They require at least 350 acres of uninterrupted grassland to nest. So they are not drawn to places like a household lawn. Um, they also like areas where the grasses are actually allowed to grow up and are not mowed consistently like your lawn would be. The population at Fresh Kills Park is the largest in New York State. But they don't nest everywhere at Fresh Kills Park. This species and most of our other grassland bird species on site prefer the East Mound section of Fresh Kills Park. To learn more about why these grassland birds are choosing to nest on East Mound, we examine characteristics of the habitat to try to determine what it is that the birds like about East Mound. We looked at grassland characteristics such as stem height, grass species composition, and different types of ground cover, but we also looked at sound levels. So anthropogenic, uh, which is a word meaning human-made noise, is known to affect nest site selection and fitness, which is a word meaning breeding success, in some species. Birds use sound through their calls to communicate, and a noisy environment can make it difficult for birds to hear one another. Just like how it is difficult for us to speak to one another in a noisy room. So grassland bird species and many other bird species do a lot of calling at dawn, the time period when night transitions into day. So to see if maybe the noise levels of the, of the environment were making birds choose East Mound to nest, we recorded ambient or background noise at dawn and dusk on both East Mound and North Mound. And we hypothesized that East Mound would be quieter than North Mound, and that maybe this is why the birds would be choosing to nest on East Mound so that it would be easier for them to hear each other. So here's an example of a dawn recording from East Mound. And here's one from North Mound at dawn. And just for fun, here's one from one of the mounds at dusk, which is the time period when day transitions into night. So how did our results come out? Uh, remember that our hypothesis was that East Mound would be quieter than North Mound. So in the graph below, we're looking at sound levels in decibels on the y-axis. So that's the one going up and down on the left-hand side. On the x-axis, the one along the bottom, that's different days that we recorded. The orange lines represent different recording locations on East Mound, and the blue lines represent different lo recording locations on North Mound. So as you can see, those orange lines are a little bit higher than the blue lines, meaning that the sound levels were a little bit higher. 
So it actually turned out that East Mound is a little bit noisier than North Mound. And as you can see, this difference was quite consistent. But despite being consistent, the actual size of the difference was quite small. So small, in fact, that we think it is unlikely that grasshopper sparrows are choosing their nesting locations based on sound levels. So like most research, the questions and the work continue. Thank you from all of us at Fresh Kills Park for taking the time to learn a bit about more about the research we are doing on site, and please come visit us soon. You can learn more about the programs we have offered on site at freshkillspark.org.